Hi and welcome everyone, this is the Hobo Prepper. I am Friar Tuck, thank you for joining me. So I'm gonna make this a quick introduction because uh, the, the content that you're about to see is probably gonna be very, very important. I just kinda wanna give you some context. So what we're gonna be talking about today is stealth camping. So I did a video on it before, but um, I, I kinda want to uh, do a little bit of an update because as you move to different parts of the country, stealth camping is, is a little bit different. So when I was along the coast, uh, you had to, you know, you had to go find a park and jump in, uh, jump in a bush and hope to God that the cops don't get you uh, during uh, during their sweeps. Or what you could do is go stay in the outskirts of a city and uh, sleep in the bushes there. But then you also run the risk of either fish and wildlife, county sheriff, state police, uh, especially if you uh, have reflections to where they see you, they stop and they pull over and they tell you you got to move. Um, I don't know if the attitude of police have changed a little bit uh, or, you know, to the point where like, okay, you're there one day, if you move on, then we'll come, uh, then we won't, we'll leave you alone. Others, you know, it's kind of like, oh, as soon as they see you, but it also has to do with like, how busy is their day? How, how much have they had to do? Have they, just like any job uh, that you do, you have to bring in enough money to justify your pay. So when I got my first job in the IT field, I was doing help desk and uh, before I uh, before I moved up to becoming a network administrator and one of the things that, that I learned there is that I had to do so many billable hours otherwise I was gonna get fired because the owner couldn't pay for me well he could pay for me he just didn't want to pay for me he wanted me to pay for myself which is what an employee should do so you know when you're dealing with with police and stuff like that this could definitely be something that uh, this could definitely be something that you you need to uh be aware of is that sometimes these guys they just it's not that you've done anything it's more or less that they uh they've got quotas to meet and yet they don't want to be open about the quotas but anyways so i uh, when i was sitting here at mcdonald's because I, I needed to rest my legs and i need to kind of figure out from the locals where good places to camp were uh, i got i was told to go camp along the trail now a lot of bikers will tell you don't camp along the trail uh don't camp on the trails because um you know it's it's kind of uncouth but if you it, it, you know whereas sometimes in certain areas are like to just sleep off the trail just you know go like a couple hundred feet in there's plenty of forest behind there you can do it so um uh, to kind of pair what other bikers have said yeah you can sleep on the trail but only in emergencies and if you find a forested area, you know, I mean, there, there's nothing around here that like, uh, they have this motto, there are no homeless in, uh, in Trenton. So, and that's because they moved them all to a different county and, or uh, to a different city. So about 10 miles down the road is where all the homeless encampments are. So that'll be interesting. But, uh, so this is just my experience with stealth camping after getting local advice. And if you are gonna be stealth camping, and uh, especially around the city, always make sure to get the locals advice because they know more what's going on than anything you can find on the internet uh, and anything that you could find on maps. Uh, just because, you know, they're the locals, they live there. They know where, where different parts, where the bad parts of town, where the good parts of town are, where you'll be safe, where you won't be safe, where the homeless sleep because they know where they see them. So anyways, guys, um, you know, enjoy the video. If you want to help the channel, like, subscribe, share. Uh, also, you can leave me a tip down in the tip jar. Uh, I could use it just because I'm, I'm worried that I may not have enough food to make it to uh, to make it to Tallahassee. I've got like maybe two days worth of food left that I can that, that I can count on. But, you know, things may change over over time. So if you want to leave me a tip down in the tip jar, uh, it will definitely be going towards food. Uh, and then also you've got uh, you can come on over to Patreon. There's Patreon only content that Patreon only content will uh, it, it's kind of, it, it's how I make my money legitimate, but also it's also how I bring value to you. So some of the things that are going on, you guys won't get to see on YouTube, but if you're over on Patreon, you can. Also, you have the, uh, you have the affiliate links. I use all the gear there. Uh, it all works for me. Uh, I got to go through it. I got to cut out some of the stuff that I've gotten rid of and that I don't use. But for the most part, everything down there in that list, I have purchased and used myself and I stand behind it. But depending upon what it is you're trying to do, it may or may not be useful for you. All right, guys, enjoy the stealth camping footage. So I found a camp spot, as you guys can see, I am cooking on the burner. 
I am making some cream and mushroom soup to go with some rice and that is my dinner for the night uh, and then for breakfast I'm gonna have to figure out something to do anyways I figured I would show you I was told to camp off the trail and uh, I didn't make it too far before I finally found a camp spot and uh, I'll show you guys that in the morning Good morning, everyone. It is now um, about seven something in the morning. <clears throat> I'm having my morning cigarette. It's about 45 degrees outside. See that? It's cold enough to freeze my breath. So anyways, guys, uh, you know what? I got some of the best sleep of my life. It was quiet. It was peaceful. The guy from McDonald's gave me some good advice. This is why you want to, when you're going through a town, you, you got to rely on the locals. The locals will tell you where people sleep and everything else like that because the locals know what's going on in their town. You can do all the research you want on the internet. You can look at maps. You can look at this. You can look at that. Uh, but if you're looking for free places to stay, the places to go or the, the people to talk to are the locals. And, uh, you know, because... I, I took the time to sit back and talk to one of the locals. I found a stellar spot. Um, and I will show you kind of what, uh, how I set my camp up last night so that you can see some of the security. Um, you know, some of the, the security things that I put in place. As you see, this is the gear that I had in there. So in that backpack is my sleeping gear plus my pillow. Um, and then as you can see, there's my sleeping pad. There's my food and cooking stuff. But as you see, let's see if I could do it without it. So there is the freeway. There is the bike path. And as you see, I could have gone back in here, but I was worried about that pathway right there. So what I did is I used this to my advantage and I hid behind these bushes. And as you see where my tent is, I actually put my bike back there and I made sure to turn the rear end towards me. I made sure to push my rear end towards my window so that um, it, would, it, it wouldn't reflect from cars coming in and out. And as you see here, because it's cold out night and there's no rain, there's nothing on the outside, but on the inside, I get tons and tons of, uh, uh, of morning dew because of uh, how warm it gets inside the tent. So just so you know, this is kind of like my indicator that it is a lot warmer in my tent than it is outside. So um, this is me getting ready. I have been, it takes about 45 minutes for me to completely pack up a campsite. It takes me about that much time to put it down as well. So if you are planning, this is something that you should plan for.